So the discovery of dark energy, I think, is a good example for how uh, experimentally driven science works. Now, today we know that the universe is accelerating, but we don't know why it's accelerating. Uh, as theoretical physicists at the Oscar Klein Center, we work on finding solutions to the dark energy problem. The idea behind the actual experiment was that we could use supernovae as standard candles, meaning that by measuring the brightness of a, an object shining very far away from us, we can actually measure the distance to this galaxy where the supernova is exploding. And by doing this over at various redshifts, we could actually figure out how the universe has been expanding since a number of billions of years. So I think one of the um, most exciting moments uh, during this whole process of studying supernovae and a measured expansion rate of the universe was, of course, as always, the first supernova we found. Uh, first of all, it was the first one, but, but it, was, it was found in a period that people were very, very skeptical about this, this way of measuring, doing cosmology anyway. Nobody believed we could find a high redshift supernova distant enough to tell uh, anything about the expansion of the universe beyond what we already knew. And in particular, the people even at the lab who were working were very, very skeptical. So we pretty much knew that either we made a discovery or this project would be cancelled. So when they discovered the acceleration of the universe, what they were actually looking at was the history of the universe, the expansion history. And if you only have matter in the universe, the expansion will slow down with time because of gravity. And the more matter you have, the more it will slow down. So what they did, they discovered that the universe is accelerating. And if you, if you think of that in terms of matter, it means that the universe must have less than zero matter, because matter can only make it slow down, not make it accelerate. So what we have been doing since then is trying to determine what is causing the universe to accelerate. Now we don't know, from, we don't have a theoretical model for this, but we can actually use observations to do this. So, it's not only the amount of matter that will determine how much the universe is slowing down, it's actually also the property of matter. The theory that we have for this cosmological evolution is the theory for gravity, that is general relativity, and this theory works very well on small scales. It means that it explains why things at Earth fall on the ground, or uh, it explains why the Earth orbits the Sun, and uh, it also explains why light that we observe from far away objects is uh, bent by massive objects in the sky. But on even larger scales, on cosmological scales, we have a problem. And uh, what we do at uh, the Oscar Klein Center is we work on, on uh, alternative theories for general relativity, which reproduce the results of the theory on small scales. So on scales like the Earth or the solar system, we want the theory to make the same predictions as uh, general relativity. But on larger scales, we would like the theory to be different, such that it can account for the small value of the accelerated expansion. Of course, what we want to do now is that we want to take the next step. We want to improve these measurements even further. We want to study the properties of the acceleration over time. We can't really do that with the current data. Uh, and the fact is that with our understanding of, of supernovae, if we take supernovae, supernovae is only one of these probes that have been used for this. If we take that, our understanding of supernovae is not good enough to take the next step. We can use them as these standard candles, as these distance estimators but we can only do it to a certain accuracy. And if we want to improve the accuracy, we need to understand the supernovae better, and we need to understand what's going on along the line of sight. And we can study the supernovae, many of them, and much more carefully in the nearby universe, and then hopefully learn more about the supernovae, so we can improve our understanding of the supernovae, and then perhaps in the future also do cosmology uh, much more accurately.